With 150,000 people dead from COVID-19, allegations of corruption and cronyism, lies daily and a complete lack of accountability, it doesn't seem unreasonable to ask whether Britain is slowly turning into a mafia state. Whereas we laud ourselves of being Great Britain, the best in the world, with the mother of parliaments, it's a facade that is cracking daily. And at the heart of this is our political system's inherent vulnerability to bad actors. We rely on good chaps being in power and playing by the rules. But what if they don't? What do we do then? Where does that leave our democracy for the future? We've all seen the footage of Matt Hancock in an embrace with his advisor, but this story is so much more than sex and sleaze and kiss and tell. It goes right to the heart of the failings of the British state and the degrading of our democracy by Boris Johnson's government. Why is a close friend of Matt Hancock given such a role? Were all the proper procedures followed? And why wasn't there any transparency around her appointment? Roberto Colodangelo, Gina Colodangelo's brother, is an executive at a private healthcare firm which has won a number of NHS contracts. Has there been a conflict of interest? Gina Colodangelo was also given a parliamentary pass sponsored by a health minister, Lord James Bethel. Questions have been raised as to why he sponsored the pass, given that Gina Colodangelo had never worked for Lord James Bethel. Another issue which has emerged is the use of private email accounts by Matt Hancock and James Bethel. Why were decisions being made without sufficient transparency? And it's not just Matt Hancock, Priti Patel, Gavin Williamson, Robert Jenrick. None of them have faced up to accusations of scandal themselves. But again, there's nothing to make them do that. This is the failing at the heart of the British state, which we need to be aware of and we need to examine. Ultimately, there was never anything to compel Matt Hancock to resign over the deaths of 150,000 people. There was nothing to force Boris Johnson to demand responsibility of his ministers or demand accountability of himself. And it is this weakness at the heart of the British state that is finally being exposed. The mainstream media's role, especially the tabloid press, has been very interesting in the Matt Hancock affair. The fact that Matt Hancock resigned shows that if they had wanted to, they could have held him to account on matters of public interest. Of the care home scandal, of test and trace, of general incompetence, he has been at the heart of the cronyism which has dogged this government during the crisis. This selective interest in Matt Hancock's actions by the media shows the hypocrisy and the double standards on what they want to hold into account for and what they don't. But it also reveals something darker. The media's relationship with politicians in this country has often been described as a mafia racket. There's a complicity between those in the corridors of power in this country and the media barons. This relationship needs to be exposed. One of the underreported aspects of this scandal has been the footage that showed Matt Hancock kissing Gina Colodangelo. It raises serious questions about the security and the vulnerability of this country to politicians in the highest positions of power and potential compromise. Of course, it was the Sun newspaper that published the footage, but many have asked what were Rupert Murdoch's motives in publishing the images and removing Matt Hancock now. We know that Murdoch has close ties to this government. Not only did Michael Gove and Priti Patel attend his wedding to Jerry Hall, he has been in contact and had meetings with Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak. Administrations can work hand in glove with media proprietors to advance their own ends. Perhaps it was convenient for Murdoch and Boris Johnson to dispatch of Matt Hancock now. Perhaps it was better for him to go over a personal scandal rather than anything that might touch too closely on implicating Boris Johnson, who, as we know, has been at the helm with Matt Hancock during the coronavirus crisis. We're in a position where the media is picking and choosing what to hold which government minister to account count over when and where. It's not a good state of our democracy. Call it compromise, call it blackmail. These are serious security issues potentially for Britain, not only from foreign actors who wish us harm, but also from within the state itself. The more these scandals emerge, the more we can identify a pattern of what is actually going wrong. And it's difficult because it's a structural failing. It's not something that can be fixed with a different party or a new leader. It is at the very core of the foundations of the British state, our unwritten constitution, which doesn't seem to provide the necessary checks and balances and accountability that we need when a government which wants to lie, lie, and lie again comes to power.
The Matt Hancock scandal shows why we desperately need an independent alternative media in this country and why we need to be fearless in terms of holding those in positions of power to account. And you can support us. Visit bylinetimes.com to see how you can subscribe. And do do support Double Down News on Patreon if you want to see more films like this.